Left a bit. No, right a bit. A bit more. How's that? Perfect. Now crank it up. How far? Well, it needs to be up exactly ten metres and a bit. How many cranks is that? Well, you start cranking and I'll tell you when to stop. Right. Ah! Stop! What? what do you think you're doing? I, I could have broken something. I don't think so. Made of very strong material, but it's nice of you to show concern. What are you doing here? Radio Dan FM, Aerial Rector's Field Force. Radio Dan FM? I've never heard of you. Oh, you soon will have. It's the world's first ads-only radio station. Ads-only? No music. It was going to be middle of the road, but we couldn't hear the music for the traffic. Yeah, well, I'm more of a classical man myself. I thought so when I saw the jacket. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got to get on. Barry, crank it up. Just a minute. You can't do that. Yes, I can. I just turn the handle. No, I mean, you can't put that aerial up here. There's a nesting bird in that tree. Really? What is it? It's this big green thing with a trunk. Not the tree. I don't know what it is yet. I was working my way up for a closer look when you knocked me off my perch with that thing. Now, you'll be doing me a great favour if you just pack up your stuff and clear off. Oh, we can't do that. We were here first. No, you weren't. Yes, we were. We saw you arrive. In fact, we sort of helped you. I was up the tree. He's got a point, Paul. Da, 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 da. He might have a point, Barry, but we've got the map. This is where we're supposed to be, and this is where we're staying. Uh, could I see the map, please? Certainly. Thank you. There. Now shift. Perhaps we could try somewhere else. It's a possibility. Fetch your stuff, Barry. Hey, it's working. We're on air. This is Radio Dan FM, broadcasting to you on 97 to 99 FM, and... Oh, now it's not. <clears throat> That's what it is. You, sir, are interrupting my broadcast to the nation. What's afoot? That is. Hey, hey, Barry, somebody's put a hat on our mast. It's not a hat, it's a nest. You took it out of the tree with you. Did we? Yes, and I hope you haven't disturbed it. It can't be. It can't? What is it? I think it's a... Great Scott! No, a Great Scott is a big man in a kilt. If my eyes don't deceive me, that is the nest of a very rare bird indeed, named after my grandfather. It's called Grandad. Named after my grandfather. He was an ornithologist. An ornithologist? Clectodons. Oh. No, birds. And if that is a macaw hawk's nest, then this is a very great event indeed. <laughs> They're very nearly extinct. Well, that's all very nice, but we must get on. Sally, get up there and remove the obstruction. Just a minute, you can't move it. Why not? It's not that big. Don't you listen. It could be the rarest bird in Britain. Very unusual breeding habits. It lays hundreds of eggs at one time, then selects just one of them to hatch. Really? What does it do with the others? <coughs> oh. Yes. Yes, it's definitely a macaw hawk's nest. I'll be back in a few minutes. Now what? Well, rare or not, that thing's interfering with damn transmissions. Get rid of it. Yeah, but you heard what he said. It's protected. Well, if it's insured, we've got nothing to worry about. I don't think protected means insured. Whatever. We're not having a feathered freak of nature interfere with Dan's programming. I mean, we've got his listeners to think about, haven't we? Has he got any? Just get rid of it, will you? OK, but I'm doing this under duress. Look, if there's any complaints, you just send them to me, OK? Hey! There's a little door hole here and everything, Paul. Hello, little birdie. Nice little birdie. <laughs> How are you doing? If you want a job doing, do it yourself. Out the way. Now then, you little varmint. You're coming with me, whether you like it or not. Ah! Oh! That looks cosy. Oh, dear. Right. It's going to be like that, is it? Well, this calls for drastic action. It's either him or me. 
I'll say goodbye now, then. Yes, very funny. I think we should give Dan a ring and let him know what's going on. What? And tell him we've been thwarted by a bird? We'd never be able to look him in the face again. We've never been able to look him in the face anyway. No, but... <laughs> Hello, Dan. I'm Chief Ring around here. Hello, Dan. Yes, I've got a little problem. No, it's not him this time. No, I've got a macaw hawk bird stuck up the mast. Right, leave it to me then. What did he say? He said I've got to get rid of it. How did he suggest you do that? He said I've got carte blanche. <laughs> Where have you been? I've been down by the road waiting for Blanche to arrive with a cart. I don't know where she's got to. Well, it don't matter. We don't need her anyway. What's this? Isn't it obvious? This is my Peyton Chuckle audio-operated water cannon blaster. You see, it works on the sound of the hawk. When it hears it, it hones in on it and whoosh! Blasts it to smithereens. Won't that hurt? No, we'll stand well back. No, I mean the bird. No, 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 no. Just give it a nasty surprise. Hey, this'll teach it to tuckle a chuckle. Uh, tackle a chuckle. You see, you've got to think like the enemy. Does that make you a bird brain? Yeah. We'll come back to that one. Oi, you! Oi, I know you can hear me. I know you're in there. Come on, show your face. Come on, don't be shy. Well, the bird's gone, but the nest's still there. <laughs> I've done it! I've got rid of the bird. Get Dan on the phone. Tell him I've got rid of it. Hello? It's Dan. Tell him I've got rid of the bird. Yes. 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 OK. You didn't tell him. I thought I'd better not. He said he'd been doing some research into the macaw hawk. Oh, yes. He said it's very rare and thought to be extinct. Well, we knew that. What else did he say? He said we must make sure it's completely safe until his bird handler arrives. Oh, dear. Did he say what would happen if we didn't? Right. What did he say? Nothing much. But we better make sure there's no sharp fence posts around anywhere. Oh dear, oh dear. How are we going to get the bird back? It's easy. I'll imitate the bird's noise. Then it'll think there's another hawk here, and it'll come back thinking it's all right, won't it? Hey, hey, we'll be all right. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, I'm attracting it. Oh. Uh, Paul, not now, I'm being attractive. Oh, 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 oh. It's back in the nest. Where are you going with that? I'm going to give it to the bird. The bird? <laughs> I know what I'd like to give him. Anyway, that's mine. Give him one of your own. Well, please yourself. Oh! Oh, no, that's porridge. That's yours. Ha-ha, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> Do you know, I think he senses you don't like him by the tone of your voice. Good. In that case, I won't have to tell him to his beak, will I? Ah, oh, still here, are you? Yes. Yes, well, you can soon be on your way. Now, if I could just borrow your ladder... Da, 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 da. I wouldn't go up there if I was you. Why not? That's why. What were you doing up there? You weren't messing about with the bird, were you? No, I was giving him some bread. He's quite a friendly little chap when you get to know him, Paul. Yes, well, I don't want to get to know him, thank you very much. Yes, well, you needn't worry about that now. I'm here to take it off your hands. I've decided to take the bird home to study more closely. I will then publish the findings of my research in Twitch's monthly. <laughs> well, it'll probably make me famous. <laughs> Just like grandfather. <laughs> I'm very sorry you can't do that. Tell him, Paul. Uh, there's nothing I'd like better than see the back of that feathered little menace. But I'm afraid he's right. We've made other arrangements, you see. Other arrangements? You can't make other arrangements. That bird is mine. Ah, uh, well, you see, technically, it belongs to Dan. He's sending someone round to pick it up. Who? Oh, somebody you wouldn't know. He's a specialist bird handler. Yeah, it's probably someone who'll just take the bird and keep it in a cage. Good. No, it's not. He doesn't belong in a cage. Well, one of us does. Where would you keep him? Uh, well, in an interwoven metal strip security module. What's that? A cage. No way. Hey, come back here, Barry. Oi, come back. Forget it. I'm staying here till he's gone and Albert's safe. Albert? Oh, he gets very attached to things. Anyway, you can't have it. It's already spoken for. Mm, you can't have it, I will soon see about that. Has he gone? He has, but I don't think we've seen the last of him. Well, you know what Dan said. We've got to protect the bird. By the way, I forgot to mention, uh, I just saw your van rolling down the hill by itself. Oh, thank you very much. What? Go on, Barry, quick! Just a minute, just a minute. We haven't got a van. 
You know what this means, don't you? Somebody's lent his one. No, it means our friendly bird watch is trying to pull a fast one. Do you think so? I do. And you know what happened last time somebody tried to pull the wool over my eyes? You refused to buy the jumper. Exactly. Back to the mast. Well, he's not here. No. Looks like we were too quick for him. I'll just move this to be on the safe side. Yes. No sign? No. But we better keep an eye out just to be safe. You haven't been messing with Albert, have you? Certainly not. I just happened to notice your mast was a bit wobbly, and so I thought I'd better hang on to it until you got back from your van. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, you see. We haven't got a van. What you got to say about that? Oh, uh, must have been someone else's. <laughs> right, I'll be off then. Right. I don't suppose you've changed your mind about me keeping the bird? No. Right. <laughs> I think he realises at last the kind of man he's dealing with. Have seen the last of him then? Probably. He obviously realises I'm not the sort to be trifled with. Oh, yes. One look at my determined expression made him realise I'm not easily moved. I thought you didn't like Albert. If by Albert you mean that stupid thing at the top of the mast, I don't. But there's a time in every man's life when he has to stand up and be counted. Oh, yes. A time to grasp the nettle firmly in both hands. A time to stand shoulder to shoulder with his face set grimly against the grindstone of the wrongdoer. Besides, I haven't finished taking all the fence posts down yet. What? Grab it, quick! To me! To you! No, no, you don't! To me! To me! No, to me, then! To me! To me! To me! To me! To me. To me. To me. Get off! <laughs> you know what this means, don't you? Someone's lost the net. No, someone's not given up the ghost yet. Get back up the ladder and see if you can see anything. Anything? Nothing! What's that? Are you all right? Fine. This bush broke me fall. Funny thing, I thought I was going to miss it. So did I. You! Yes, me. And he can have the bird with my blessing. <laughs> oh, just a minute. Hello? Oh, yes, Dan. I say. I say. You can't. You don't. Well, I know one person will be pleased. And I know another who won't. <laughs> was that Dan? It was. What did he want? He said he didn't want that bird anymore. He doesn't. He doesn't. No. He said it's nearly extinct as it is, and by the time we've finished looking after it, it probably will be. A bit harsh, I thought. Does that mean we can set it free? Not exactly. I thought we should give it to Mr McCaw. But he's going to put it in a cage. Oh, but only a little cage, after all. Forget it. I did tell you, he does get attached to these things. Barry, if we promise we won't breathe in a cage, will you bring it down? You promise? I promise. I don't. Play along. If you say so. All right, I promise too. Now come down here. Right, give it here. There you are, Mr McCaw. All yours. You promised? I had my fingers crossed. Me too. Forget it. Ah! Come back here. Which way went? 
no, I lost sight of him when he flew up that oak tree. Me too. I didn't realise he could do that. Yeah, I'm beginning to wish it wasn't the rarest bird of its kind after all. Wouldn't be worth the bother. Wouldn't it? Well, no, of course not. What's the point of owning a bird that anyone can see flying round the countryside? I suppose so. Come on. It's no use, he could be anywhere. He came from just through there. This is it. Any moment now, and I will own the rarest bird in the world. What have you got to say to that? You're hurting me arm! Oh, sorry. Follow me quietly. Aha! Uh oh. There's hundreds of them. It isn't rare at all. There, there. Look on the bright side. At least you don't have to take Albert home. And Barry will be pleased. No. Oh, cock a doodle do. What's that? Turn the mast onto automatic and go home? Well, if you say so. Only trouble is, I don't know where Barry is at the moment. Oh, cancel that. He's just flown in. Where have you been? I've been looking all over the woods for you. Where's Mr McCaw gone? Oh, him. I left him back in the woods counting nests. It seems that the McCaw hawk's not on the verge of extinction after all. I'm pleased to hear it. Hmm. Do you know, I don't know why anybody hasn't found them before. They seem to have appeared from nowhere. Fancy that. Yeah, fancy. Anyway, Dan says he wants us to put this onto automatic and go home. And quite frankly, I'll be pleased to do so. Hang on. What's this? Um, I've no idea. You've been making nests. Well, one or two. One or two? Well, three or four, then. I thought if McCaw thought there were plenty of his grandad hawks around, he'd leave ours alone. And I was right, wasn't I? You were. Anyway, where is it? Oh, never mind. Probably let it go. Well, let's just do what we've been paid for and go, eh? There. If I ever see a macaw hawk again, in my life it'll be too soon. I've never seen such a filthy, dirty, ugly bird in all my life. <laughs>